Hello everybody, this is Theron. Welcome to Minecraft Land Party. And I'm putting a roof on the drown farm. Uh, which is working kind of fantastically, and it'll work even better once I get this roof on. Oops. Ah, uh, darn it. Got it. Okay. Let's probably concentrate on actually covering the areas where the spawning happens, but uh, I, I need to fill in the whole thing. I guess I don't necessarily need to, but we will see. Um, so yeah, this uh, this went pretty, pretty well. Uh, got some uh, drowns, got another trident. So we will uh, enclose this in and then I'll probably put little uh, wings on a couple sides. I don't need to make the full diamond out of it like we did at the witch farm, but that'll this will work. And in theory, I should be okay working through the night up here because A, these are hot bottom half loves, so nothing's going to be able to spawn in them. And the drowns, I, I suppose if a drown with a pitchfork happens to spot me, uh, might be able to try and hit me and knock me off. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll give it a try. Uh, I did sleep fairly recently, so I don't have to worry about the phantoms so much. Um, it's pretty cool. I like the way the cyan glass... Uh, that I did a little the little protection area just kind of blends in and if it weren't for the fact that it'd be so much glass uh, I think I would be interested in wrapping the whole thing in the cyan glass um, but it doesn't need it it's not necessary so we will not do so interesting so we're getting all salmon. Um, I'm surprised we're not getting other types of fish. But the only type of fish that I've seen so far has been the salmon. Which is interesting. So, anyway. Uh, so anyway, how are you? I'm doing alright. Uh, the last, uh, last episode was me building the, the farm part of this. Uh, episode before that was super long and talky. Uh, I was talking about how I was doing. It was recorded a couple weeks ago. Um, and, oops, more stone bricks. Uh, stone slabs. Oops, ugh. Okay. That's nice. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, let's see. What has changed since then? I'm still feeling well. Have not had the follow-up MRI after post uh, post treatment, so we haven't confirmed that the the steroids took care of the uh, <clears throat> of the flare-up completely. That should be getting scheduled shortly, um, and I got my new car last week. So that's uh, that's exciting, <laughs> and uh, I think I know like when this lease is about to be up. I think I know what to do, and need uh, need a little bit more time than I really had. Not by my own choice, of course, but need a little more time than I really had uh, this time for this vehicle. Um, but basically, I need to shop around and find the dealer who's going to who's willing to give me the best the best uh, the best deal oh come on and then take that deal to the other dealerships or preferably the dealership that I really want to get the car from and then uh, tell them hey 
I have this deal. Can you beat it? It's kind of annoying that that's what you have to do when you buy a car, but it does seem to be the way that you have to do things. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to be at the mercy of whatever they decide they're going to try and fleece you for at the first place. But anyway, um, let's see what else. Pasta. I don't know if I cover. I think I talked about this a little bit. My whole theory that nobody really knows what they're doing when it comes to making pasta. Um, there's just a lot of tradition and uh, tradition and ceremony. Eh, ceremony is not the, quite the right word, but to sort of uh, people do things the way they were taught to do it and the way they're used to, and that's good. Uh, so I've uh, been doing some experimenting and of course making gluten-free pasta is a very different deal from making traditional wheat pasta um, and I think as I said you know just as I don't think anyone really knows what they're doing with the wheat pasta although the the traditional uh, common sense that everyone seems to have isn't a bad way to go it certainly works I don't think people know why it is they're doing the things that they're doing other than that's just the way it's always been done um so been uh came up with a flour blend it's rice and tapioca flour and that works pretty well uh, i want to oops i want to experiment with uh modified tapioca starch which I have some, I just need to mix up another batch of flour with it. And the tapioca, the reason, one of the reasons for using tapioca is it is an emulsifier, it thickens things. And you kind of want that in your dough. Uh, but uh, tapioca, like cornstarch, kind of works better at, at uh, warmer temperatures. So at room temperature, it doesn't it doesn't work super well, and the modified tapioca starch is pretty clever in that it works by uh, they modify it by by sort of heat treating it such that it sort of starts to act like it's already under temperature, uh, even when it's at room temperature, and um, and that's oh hi Mr. Drown, uh, so that's that's the um, so it should have better emulsifying powers in the, the regular flour mixture at room temperature or perhaps slightly chilled uh, when I'm mixing the dough up than a regular tapioca starch. And I'm sorry, you might be hearing the heater. It's finally starting to get cool enough in Los Angeles at night at least uh, for the heater to come on, which is kind of nice. Um, and it's also helpful for the firefighters who are fighting the, the wildfires that are still burning in Northern and Southern California. And in fact, there was a new fire last night, um, the Sierra fire, which I think they got on, on top of that one pretty, pretty quickly. So, um, and it's supposed to not only start to cool down, but uh, potentially it may actually rain a little bit. So that would also be helpful for the fires. The fires this year are bad. I mean, neither neither fire was bigger than other ones that we've had, you know, big bad fires that we've had in recent years, but they were very destructive. And, uh, Burned down a lot of houses, which is no good, and displaced lots and lots of people because the the fires were happening in very a couple cases in very populated areas. In one case, um, one city, not a particularly large city, but uh, the fire completely obliterated the entire city. Like they don't know if there's go oh oh hey dude. You really think you can, you're trying to hit me from all the way down there. Okay. Um, like they don't know if there's going to be a city 
after the fire is put out. Like, it, they, they may not rebuild, which is kind of crazy. Um, so, okay. Anyway, um, so I made some pasta the other night. I, I tried my new a new recipe, which is the same sort of rice flour and tapioca flour, or tapioca starch, uh, regular tapioca starch mixture. And then I added uh, xanthan gum, which is the common, it's a gum, it's an emulsifier that people put into their uh, gluten-free flours. It helps with the, the texture and helps keep things hold, stick together a little better um, and then and then I also tried this uh, psyllium husk powder which is husk of a seed that gets used for making glue uh, if you're old like me you may remember instead of having like Elmer's glue or rubber cement uh, sometimes you saw in in school or in, in offices you saw mucilage and that's uh, that's this glue that is made from the seeds of this plant, and the uh, the the husk of the of the seed can be uh, pulled off and uh, and ground into a uh, into this powder that you can add to baked goods and it isn't quite as emulsifying as the tap uh, as the xanthan gum but if you put too much xanthan gum in to pastas or whatever these you know baked things they can get a little slimy and the psyllium powder isn't quite the psyllium root or husk powder it doesn't quite have that same sort of feature as the xanthan gum. So I put in a little bit of xanthan gum and a little bit of the psyllium husk uh, powder just to see how that worked. And it worked nicely and it made the, the dough a lot easier to work and a lot easier to roll out. It did not have an adverse effect on taste and it had a nice, it had a really nice texture to it. I, th I think it was a really nice plop. Uh, I think it turned out really well. And so I was able to roll out the dough thin enough to get um, both fettuccine and linguine and this uh, big fat spaghetti-ish round pasta that Atlas calls bigoli. And I think the bigoli is my favorite. It's like ramen noodles. And I guess traditionally... The noodles are made with buckwheat, so I may have to, or not may have to, but I will be trying that. Uh, but, um, there we go. Uh, but anyway, it's uh, that was that was a big success. I, I like that quite a bit. I had some of it tonight, and uh, so, and the noodles keep. You can throw them. They they freeze, and you can throw them in the fridge and keep them for a while. And, uh, and dry them out and they will keep in the pantry for months so it's all good um, and the next the next batch of flour that I make I will put in the modified tapioca starch and see if that helps and uh, see what that's like and I may also have been thinking about maybe trying potato starch so mixing it with uh, right now it's at about 75% cornstarch or 75% uh, rice flour a mix of white brown and sweet which is a particularly I don't know a particular blend of white rice uh, which also is you know sometimes called glutinous rice <laughs> so that's uh Um, so it's kind of a, a mix of that, 75% of that mixture plus 25% of the tapioca. So I might make the 25% the 
sort of tapioca and and potato. Let's try that and see how that works. Okay, so we're just we're making progress here. I'm going to keep on doing this, and uh, we'll see how that goes. I've got at least one more night before I need to sleep, but we will see how far we get. Okay, <clears throat> about to place the last one. Now, this is above the egg, and I, I said last episode that the egg needed sky access. That wasn't exactly true. Um, it just needs access above it. I, I don't entirely understand what, what the issue is, but um, the zombies, or the drowns need to be able to... There needs space above the egg for the drowns to, uh, I don't know, be able to see it, I guess. Okay, so now we're going to go down. I guess I'm a little vulnerable at this point, but we should be spawning drowns at this point. There's, there's one right there. Let me quickly get down below and close this up. Oh, that was a trident, dude. Let's see what we got here. All right. So there we go. All right. Well, I think that's going to be it for now. Um, I need to figure out what it is that's driving Bowser nuts. And, uh, and then see how it's a little light over here. I need to extend this out to, uh, to cover... To cover the edges a little better but that's just a matter of improving things it's not actually necessary for it to work so we're doing pretty well here so anyway there we go um there you go and i also am going to replace all the glass with slabs like this and then get rid of the bed because it's not necessary at this point and there we go and eventually i'll put in a portal Ah, die. I'll put a portal up here and link this up to the nether hub, but for the time being, it's uh, it's off the grid, as it were. Oh, there's a little baby. There we go. Okay, well, that's it. Sorry about the barking dog. Thank you for watching. This is there, and it's been Minecraft Land Party. And I will see you next time. All right, bye.